Hi everyone, I'm your host, Malik Mercier, and this is GBH's Why It Matters, the history series where we use the past to explain the present. The Russian-Ukrainian war has brought increased focus to the security alliance between the United States, Canada, and European countries known as NATO, with Ukraine and then Finland and Sweden seeking to join NATO and Russia threatening retaliatory steps if NATO continues to expand, you might be wondering why NATO was formed in 1949 and what its purpose is today. Here to tell us about the history of NATO and to help us connect the past to the present is Dr. Susan Colburn. Susie, welcome. It's so nice to be here with you, Malik. Thanks for having me. It's so good to have you as well. Can you just start off by telling us what is NATO? NATO, as an acronym, stands for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And NATO is a political and military alliance that spans the Euro-Atlantic, including the United States. So Susie, can you tell me when and why NATO was formed in the first place? NATO was formed in April of 1949 with the signing of an agreement known as the North Atlantic Treaty, hence the name, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And the heart of that treaty was a collective defense clause known as Article 5. In essence, what Article 5 says is that an attack on any member of the alliance will be considered an attack on all of the members of the alliance. And so this Article 5 idea emerged in the wake of World War II, where officials on both sides of the Atlantic, in the United States, in Canada, across Western Europe, were worried about what the Soviet Union might do, and concerned in particular that the Soviet Union might try to spread its ideology, communism, to countries across Western Europe. The original 12 allies who negotiated this treaty, that by banding together, they could make clear that they were a strong coalition, that they were all interested in preserving one another's security, and particularly that the United States would be there to protect these Western Europeans if the Soviet Union did uh, try and attack them. So Susie, some time has passed since NATO was formed in the Cold War years. How would you describe the purpose of NATO today? When we think about NATO, we often think of it as this Cold War institution, but it's now had over three decades of life beyond the Cold War. And NATO still has a very important role to play as the leading institution in preserving the security of Europe. In recent times, particularly following the Russian invasion of Ukraine in early 2022, I think most people see that the prime role for NATO is once again about the nuts and bolts of making sure that Europe is safe. So Susie, some have said that NATO is no longer relevant today and that the U.S. should pull out. Why do some hold that view and what is the counter argument to that position? Critics of NATO, particularly those in the United States, tend to focus their arguments on one particular issue. All right, so how much money does the United States pay to keep the alliance going and to ensure the defense of its allies in Europe? So often we hear critics in this school arguing that the European allies are freeloaders who don't spend enough on their defense or don't care enough about defending their own countries. What is the counter argument to that position? The counter argument to this, and it is one that policymakers uh, in the United States have come back to generation after generation, is that a Europe at peace is good for the United States. That a Europe filled with like-minded democratic states is important for U.S. foreign policy, is important for U.S. security, and is important for the U.S. economy, particularly for U.S. exports. And so there are lots of reasons why the United States and why Americans should care about having European allies who are working in common purpose with the United States and are secure in their home countries. Who is currently seeking membership in NATO and what has Russia's reaction to that been? There are five different countries who have expressed interest in joining NATO right now. The first two are Sweden and Finland, both of whom uh, expressed formal interest in joining the alliance after Russia's invasion of Ukraine uh, in early 2022. They have now been formally invited to join by NATO's members. 
But you've then got three other countries who have also expressed interest in joining, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and then Georgia and Ukraine. In the case of Georgia and Ukraine, these have been particularly controversial. The Russian leadership feels uh, quite sensitive about these countries that were once part of the Soviet Union joining what they consider to be a rival bloc and moving NATO even closer to Russia's borders. I uh, would point to both the Russian invasion of Georgia in 2008, and then the Russian invasions of Ukraine in 2014, and then renewed in 2022 as a sign that the Russians have been willing to go pretty far in making sure that neither Georgia nor Ukraine are part of the Euro-Atlantic community. And I think the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022 has reminded many policymakers and everyday citizens that NATO still does matter. We can see it in Ukraine's continued desire to join NATO. There is something to that Article 5 guarantee that it is that collective defense is important and that it can provide a degree of security that right now no other organization is able to provide. Susie, learning about the history of NATO has helped us better understand the Russia-Ukrainian conflict today. We thank you so much for being here and being on the show with us and for helping us connect the past to the present. Thank you. This was so fun.